Welcome back travelers to your referral roadmap. Thank you for joining us again for season two. This podcast is dedicated to helping you unleash your personal and business revenue potential by cultivating referral relationships. Now in this 10 part series, we're diving into the dynamic realm of target markets. We'll be exploring how understanding and effectively tapping into target markets can be a key driver of success, offering insights and strategies on how to master this essential aspect of your business. This week, we're talking about how to identify and connect with your target markets. Athena, I think you have a story to share with us. Is that right? Oh, boy, do I. (laughs) I'm so excited. First of all, Jada, hello, season two. I know. Hello. Welcome back. Yeah, welcome back, you guys. All right. So season one was about mindset. And season two is about identifying our target markets. And so um, this is I'm excited about this because ah, this subject is so powerful to make a difference in your business and um, your referral partnership. So I'm going to do a two part story. You mind, Jerry? I mean, Jada, I'm going to do a <laughs> little two part. By the way, her dad's name is Jerry. I, get, <laughs> I got myself confused. But so a two part story here. First of all, let me let me take you guys back over a decade ago because I, it's so relevant to why we're together. And that is I was part of that home building company and I had to build the sales and marketing from scratch. And we didn't really know who the client was. We didn't know who who they really were. We knew who wanted the business, but we didn't know what they thought, what they looked like, where to find them, anything like that. So you can imagine, right? If if you own a business or you're in sales and somebody says, go get clients. And then you're like, who? Right? And you're overwhelmed and you feel defeated. And so then you're like, I'll just go talk to everybody or something that people tell people all the time is go after your friends and family. (laughs) Eh, Not a good idea. So in this case, just like you have probably felt, I felt overwhelmed. I felt um, scared and really didn't know where do I go find them? And by the way, I don't have any friends and family wanting to build a custom house on land. So (laughs) uh, that was out for me anyway. But I was fortunate enough to go and to hear Darren Hardy speak at a paid training. And there on day two, he said something about making sure that you understand your target market and your referral partner for that target market. Now that you guys was like, boom, like I'll never forget it. When I'm 80 something years old and you know, I don't know, doing whatever I'm going to do at 80, maybe still speaking on a stage, I will still think about that moment. I know exactly where I stood and exactly that moment that changed everything for me. And I'm hoping that you'll have that in this series, one of those aha life-changing moments. Because when I learned from him that I needed to understand my target market better, the people I needed to serve, but also the people who were serving my people. Now, here's what was weird about the TNS story, Turner and Son Homes. We thought the client was the person building the house. Mm-hmm. And it eventually grew to that. But you see, bef- but it's kind of the chicken and the egg, Jada. We had to go find people who already had our potential new client base. Well, I hope you're mm-hmm. tracking with me. And then our case, it started out with real estate agents. Real Mm -hmm. estate agents had a higher probability of knowing people who wanted to build. So in our case, we kind of flipped it upside down. We still needed to learn who the end user, the person building the house was going to be. But we knew that the person that would know those people was an agent. So we went after and defined our first, very first referral partner. And I went out and started building relationships with them. It was through that activity that the new version, really, because we started to get some leads, we started to see who our demographic, the target market was for the end user, the person buying the product. Once we identified who could give us leads, 
and who wanted the house, it changed everything. Mm-hmm. And until then, I was in quicksand. I was overwhelmed, disappointed, frustrated. But as soon as we identified it, then we went after it. Mm-hmm. And I know we've already talked about this. I believe that we talk, we have talked about this um, already within this podcast. But if not, I apologize. So I'm going to say it again in case you're listening right now for the first time on your treadmill or in your car. or um, Maybe you've got us on the background while you're working. And that is this. When you really focus on something, you'll start to see results. And that's what we did. When we started out at Turners and Homes, that moment, that life moment I just told you, we had less than five referral partners. Fast forward a decade later, Jada, where are we at roughly? We're roughly around 1,500. Okay, so roughly around 1,500. And by the way, you might be like, that's not very many. Or you might be like, whoa, that's a lot. But I want you to think, we're a little tiny home builder that only builds in a very small area on land. We can't get any more niche. We're like niche, niche, niche. And we still have 1,500, roughly. So I want to think about this. I want you to think, those of you who are listening, what would happen if in the next couple of years you could go from having five referral partners to 1,500, what would that do to your business? What would that do to free up your time? Remember, your referral partners are your salespeople, right? So we got to think about that. Now, the other approach, I want to I want to f- flip that switch a little bit because that that's an interesting dynamic what we did. Now I want to talk about my coaching business. And in that business, it was the opposite. We've been able to identify, right, Jada? We've been able to identify the client, who mm-hmm. they are, and what they think, what they want. And from that, we're building another target market based on the referral partners to those people. I want you to hear that either story can work. Mm-hmm. Please don't get pigeonholed in thinking, I don't know. Either way, the power of target market allows you to take control of your business Mm -hmm. and allows you to know where your energy, your marketing, your advertising needs to go. Extremely powerful. So, all right, Jada, I'm done. I'll quit talking. (laughs) Well, um, honestly, I wanted to share one of your favorite, or I guess my favorite quotes, but you say it. (laughs) Yeah. Um, whenever we talk about target market, anytime Athena always mentions, you can't, uh, you can't find what you don't define. And that is so relevant to finding your target market, because if you can't define it, then how are you supposed to find it? You know, it's like going into the grocery store without a grocery list. How do you know what you need for the week for dinner? Oh, and so, (laughs) and don't go hungry. And don't go hungry. Yeah. (laughs) Or don't end up with just a bunch of bonbons and popsicles because that's what I would do. (laughs) You know what I like to equate that to, too, Jada, which is kind of funny, is that a whole slug bug thing, right? The slug bug or this. This is a great one that I use sometimes when I'm teaching. Yeah. Remember, you get a new car, right? You're so pumped. You're like, I'm the only one with this cool, cool car. And then you drive your car and then everybody's got your car. There's target market, right? It's awareness. Oh, yeah. I even started thinking about like, I would love a Kia Telluride because I just think that they're really pretty. And I started thinking about them and I was like, yeah, I don't see very many in this like green color that I really love. As soon as I had that thought, I see them on the road at least two to three times a week. And I work from home, so I don't drive that much. (laughs) Case in point, um, case in point, right there. I love it. All right, Jada, so come on, give give us your stuff. All right, I'm going to give you guys a lot of facts. So please don't be overwhelmed. They will be in the show notes, a link to the HubSpot study that I'm going to be referencing. Um, But there's a lot of statistics in here that I think are super important. So wanted to share that with you all. And just to make sure that I don't um, miss misspeak on anything, I'm going to read it directly from the study. Fair enough. Fair, fair. (laughs) Awesome. So 
demographic segmentation is the most effective for B2C businesses. Athena, can you explain what a B2C business is for those that don't yes, understand? Yes, business to customer. Perfect. And then psychographic segmentation is the most effective for B2B businesses. Athena? Business to business. There you go. And then behavioral segmentation is the most effective for e-commerce businesses. Athena, can you give an example of maybe like an e-commerce business? Amazon. There you go. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this study by HubSpot revealed that 30% of marketers who participated in it used market segmentation techniques to improve their email engagement. And here's what they found. Segmented campaigns had a 14.31% higher open rate Ooh. and saw 101% more clicks than non-segmented campaigns. Boom. Athena, what would that do if you just had 101% more clicks than you had now? <laughs> well, here's the thing. I mean, first of all, good for them that they have people come into their site, right? Yeah. But this is where you get conversion. This is what we're talking about. So this is taking prospecting into conversion, which leads to sales, which leads to revenue. So, yeah, and I'll take those numbers. So just I'll FYI. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so continuing, uh, email marketers who segmented their audience before campaigning stated that their revenue generated increased up to 760%. Okay, time out. Everybody just do the math. Take your current revenue and figure out what a 760% increase could be. And you know what I love about this, right, Jada? I'm, I always interrupt you, you guys. No, I'm that's sorry. Okay. But this is like, whoa, everybody wants more revenue. We want growth. But it is by narrowing down our focus that gives it to us. Keep mm -hmm. preaching, preaching the facts to us. <laughs> Hey, I appreciate you interrupting me. It breaks up some statistics. I know we don't all love to hear statistics just <laughs> rambled off. So <laughs> uh, targeted and segmented emails brings in 58% of all revenue. 88% mm. of users agree that they are more likely to respond to an email favorably if it looks like it's been specifically created for them. Okay, can we just stop for a second? Of course. Wow. That is a huge number. Mm-hmm. You guys, so those of you who are looking at doing email campaigns and emails to people, I hope you heard that 88% agree they're more likely to respond. So think about all the effort, Jada, that goes into an email campaign just to have people not opening it. This That's huge. Yeah. Okay. That's Personalization. Massive. Okay, perfect. Personalization. And 10% of respondents are annoyed by too little or no personalization. Okay. I can relate to that. Uh -huh. <laughs> Only 4% of marketers use highly personalized targeting, 13% use segmentation for different audiences, 31% claim that they use basic segmentation, a two to five, two to five criteria, and 53% do not target at all. Okay, can we just stop? We could do a whole class just on that stat. So many people, Jada, you know, we get the emails, we get people asking us questions in our coaching and, and boot camps and speaking engagements. And yeah. they say, how do I, you know, how do I rev up? How do I get the revenue? How do I beat my competition? Right here is one of those ways. Right here. Yeah, exactly. Right here. Ma highly personalized target marketing. Yeah. All right. And I'm more than 50% of people aren't doing that. Wild. Growth, 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 growth. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Lots of room for growth. And 58% of revenue is generated thanks to segmented and personalized emails. Perfect. 62% of marketers say that personalization is the most effective technique. Okay. Today, 45% of marketers use trigger-based emails. However, they can be responsible for as much as 20% of your email marketing revenue. Interesting. And well, we have not tried that one. That might be something we... Pull out of the hat, Jaden, and give a whirl, little whirl on. I was just thinking that too. I'm like, huh, I think we got a, <laughs> got a little tip for ourselves today. Yep. <laughs> um, marketers who segment their emails, their email list by purchase history see a 10% increase in opens and a 15% increase in clicks. Interesting. Okay. And marketers who segment their email list by location see a 12% increase in opens and an 18% increase in clicks. Marketers who segment their email list by interest see a 15% in opens and a 20% increase in clicks. Wow. All right. Now, that was a lot of facts. So, again, I will make sure to put those in the show notes below. 
Um, now that I think, Athena, now that we have all these facts, I'd love to hear what real talk and real strategies you have for us on um, finding your target market. Excellent. Well, I'm so glad you, um, you shared those. And by the way, we were laughing even before our segment today that, you know, we own uh, multiple businesses. And so as we do work to look at the statistics, but these statistics that Jada is going to link in, in the show notes to you is the raw data that is current going on. So this is not aged information. This is right now. And the key word that keeps coming out is personalization, personalization. By the way, Google, it's word for the year. Did anybody know that Google had a word for the year? I just <laughs> learned this. I'm like, wow. Google has its own New Year's resolution. I know, <laughs> good for Google. But their New Year's resolution goal word this year is authenticity. So if you think about, and that's interesting, they're focusing on that because of AI. So they're, they, they are really working for a balance there. But if we're looking for people being authentic and we're saying in, as marketers and salespeople, people want the personal approach, how do we do that, Jada, if we don't know who we're talking to? Hmm. How do we know as a business how to make it personal if we don't know who we're talking to? I can't say that enough. And if you looked at these statistics, what they're saying is you don't send the same email campaign to everybody in your database. First of all, we're living in an age of oversaturated information. So the information that we're sending, and by the way, we're talking the pots, talking to the kettle. We're listening to our own podcast right now, being transparent. We're building businesses too. We need to hear this as much as you need to hear this. So think about this. Right now is the time. Identify your target market. Know your target market for your referrals. And in your database, segment them out by interest, by demographics, depending on B2C, business to customer, or B2B, business to business. Know the different groups. Now, how do you do that? One of the ways you're going to need to do that well is have a, a functional CRM, a mm -hmm. customer relationship management tool that allows you to do those segmentations. There are affordable options. Jada and I love HubSpot. We don't get paid by them. They're not sponsoring this, this program, but we use them for our, our businesses. But there are others for the nonprofits that I'm a part of. There are other CRMs, but get one because mm -hmm. you need to be able to list out your leads, right? And we need to be able to list them out and we need to do a different campaign to them and the taglines and the messaging in, in, inside need to be personalized. Mm -hmm. So I get asked a lot, you know, well, how do I even start this? Now, I'm just going to be really honest with you. In this podcast, you guys, I can't go into all of that, but I have a very over, a great overview course, very affordable online at athenacaptain.com and get in there. It will get your brain going. And if that's not enough, give us a call us for a consultation. And then there's some coaching sessions that we could do that just help you with that if that's what you needed. So we're, we're available to help you do that. But one of the things you've got to understand is you need to define your market so that you can define your referral partner market. I was just interviewed last week, Jada, and on a different podcast. And they asked me, well, Athena, for the users out there, what is something very basic where they don't have to buy a course? This is as basic as I can get. Pick your five or five or 10 favorite clients and figure out their psychographic, social graphic, demographics, et cetera. Start learning their voice and who they are. That's the, as basic as I can get it. And if you haven't done that, start there. If you've got that, then I ask you, have you defined your referral partner? Do you know who they are? I love to use this example. A gentleman came to one of my workshops in the last 10 years, and he, um, we were trying to define his target market. And he was successful already in the real estate world, which is a lot of the world I focused on while I was doing the home building. 
And um, so we went through this exercise a little bit deeper than I'm explaining, but we went into this exercise and he said, Athena. And I'm like, what? And he's like, you're not going to believe this target market that I'm, that is emerging from just you guys just sitting in a class and figuring out this five and 10. And he said, I work really well with divorcees, people getting divorces. And he's like, I guess that's my target market. Well, yeah. First of all, not everybody wants that target market. There's right. But it helped him figure out, okay, these are the people. So he was jaded that he was able to change his marketing strategy and his branding a little bit. But more importantly, we started saying, who's touching that? Lawyers, right? So he went out and started making relationships with lawyers. Well, a year later, he came back to one of my other classes and we struck up a conversation because I said, I'll never forget you, lawyer guy. You know, I said, divorce guy, right? And he's like, yeah. And he was so proud about it because he identified it. And he went out and made relationships with referral partners. And guess who's feeding him his leads now? Mm-hmm. So now he took control because he understood who he was serving and he understood who serves his clients and then went after them. I just want you to think about that. If you're in a small business right now or you're in sales and you're like, where's my next lead going to come from? You got to know who to go find. You can't find what you don't define, right? So that's it, you guys. That's what I got to say. And I'm telling you that target market class that I have is uh, we've put as much information to get you going as possible there and it's very affordable. Get on there. I think, can you get the links in the show notes for that course, Jada? Oh, absolutely. I'll make sure it's in there. Perfect. Excellent. All right, you guys. All right. I'm done getting the rubber on the road there because people just, let's get out there. Awesome. Well, um, we would love to invite you all to join us on the Success Revolution. It's fueled by relationships, referrals, and revenue to get weekly growth strategies to take control of your sales revenue and achieve your full potential straight to your inbox. The Success Revolution is Athena's weekly blog. Again, it will come straight to your inbox and we will put the link to subscribe to that um, in the show notes below. And also don't forget to like and subscribe below to join us next week as Athena brings real talk and real strategies on the goldmine of the target markets you already have with our special guest, Heidi Rose. Can't wait to see you then. I can't, you guys, hey, listeners, you don't want to miss next week. If you think I have energy, the lady next week, she is successful. Um, She is like a Bette Midler personality, just vivacious, successful by, I mean, just go get them. Fantastic wealth of knowledge. You don't want to miss it. Don't want to miss it. So we'll see you all next week. Bye. Bye y'all.